Um, good afternoon, students. What a pleasure to uh, be here in Page Hall. Trevor Brown, Rob Greenbaum, and I, Jules Rathskelders, are standing in the policy forum uh, and congratulating you this afternoon with graduation with a BA, a BS, or a master's degree, or a doctoral degree. As you have seen in the policy forum, there's this little bust in the corner of an Athenian lawgiver by the name of Cleisthenes, right? And allegedly he's called the father of democracy. Now, democracy is an unusual political system in the sense that it is initially a political system where not everybody is considered a citizen in legal terms. But right now, democracy is very different from the kind of democracy that Cleisthenes had in mind and that Solon wrote laws about. And this is, we're talking here, what, the sixth century before the common era. Our democracy is not just a political system, it's a political administrative system. And whatever degree that you uh, will receive or that you have studied for, it is a political system that requires continuous gardening. So democracy is a political system, a political administrative system that requires constant attention. And in the light of human history, it's only been what, 250 years experimenting with large scale democracy. And as you have seen in the past couple of years, and not just in the United States, but other parts of the globe, it is not easy to keep this thing running, this thing called democracy. So with this kind of a degree, whatever you're gonna do in your life, you're actually very well informed about understanding a really important element in the society in which we live, which is that crazy political administrative system called democracy. And with a public affairs, public administration degree, you'll be able to navigate actually quite a bit better than other people do. And maybe also educate people better about what it requires. Now, having said all that, I'm going to cede the floor to my colleague, Rob Greenbaum. Thank you, Jos, for those very wise words. <laughs> my role at the college is the Associate Dean for Curriculum, and so I spend a lot of my time thinking about curriculum. And it's my distinct pleasure to welcome you all to the Glenn College pre-commencement this year. Congratulations to all of the students graduating this weekend and to all of the family and friends who have partnered with you on this journey. It was so nice to welcome some of you back into Page Hall yesterday to pick up your graduation certificates and get your picture taken where I'm standing right now. I enjoyed meeting some of the students in my class who I had not previously met in person. It was, it was quite an experience. Yesterday was also the first day in over a year that some of the faculty and staff set foot in Page Hall. And there were many smiles behind our masks. We were very pleased to be back in the building. Now, the primary purpose of today's event is to celebrate all of the hard work and perseverance of our graduates. But we also use this as an opportunity to reflect on some of the broader achievements of the college over this past year, this past most unusual year. As part of that, in what follows, our student leaders, faculty and staff will present a number of awards recognizing our graduating students. Beyond this format, one of the unique things about this year's ceremony is that we are celebrating the graduation of our very first class of the Master of Public Administration and Leadership, or MPAL program. When we started MPAL, we were curious about how we could best include our online graduates in this ceremony. Problem solved, have a global pandemic. BA, BS, MA, MPA, and doctoral graduates, welcome to the online world of our MPAL students. Congratulations to all of you for pushing through a time that none of us will forget. And not just because the almost the entirety of your past year is saved somewhere in a Zoom, on a Zoom recording. Now, beyond offering my congratulations to all of you, I have the honor of introducing Glenn College Dean Trevor Brown. This weekend, Trevor celebrates the completion of his second decade at Ohio State. In that time, he's helped us both gain our independence as a freestanding school in 2005, and then to become our own college in 2015. Under his leadership as Dean, the college has risen rapidly in the national rankings. Beyond that, he has cultivated a family-like culture that makes our college so special. And as with all families, you will remain part of the Glenn College family forever, whether you want to or not. Now, it is important to note that Dean Brown had the foresight to push us, sometimes kicking and screaming, into the world of online education a number of years ago. 
It started with two courses as part of a collaborative online master's graduate program that was led by the College of Engineering. This was part of a measured approach. We also started an online introductory undergraduate um, class, and that was followed by creating hybrid versions of all of our core master's classes. These hybrid classes include asynchronous online content combined with synchronous in-person content. So with that experience under our belts, we took the plunge two years ago to launch the, the new online MPAL degree, as well as two um, certificates that are targeted at working professionals. This approach served us really well when the world changed very quickly about a year ago and everything moved online. Trevor, thank you for pushing us out of our comfort zone such that when calamity did strike, we were as well prepared as we could be. I think there was a broader lesson in there somewhere about the importance of continuously challenging ourselves and those we work with, particularly during times when everything is seemingly going well. Well, we have been challenged more than we could imagine in this past year. To our graduates, you no longer need to worry about we faculty, either in front of the classroom or behind a webcam, challenging, challenging you intellectually each week. So be sure to take some time to celebrate your own achievements, but also realize that it's now time for you to push yourselves out of your own comfort zones every now and then. Trevor, welcome. Thanks, Rob. Let me add my congratulations. Officially, congratulations, graduates of the class of 2021. Whether you will officially graduate with an undergraduate, graduate professional, or doctoral degree or certificate, uh, we welcome you to the Glenn College alumni family and we celebrate this milestone. It's never easy to pursue a degree. There are always challenges and hurdles. And as we teach you, it's an opportunity cost. There are other things you could be doing with your time, potentially valuable. But you all chose the path of higher education to advance your academic, your professional, and your personal journey of growth, discovery, and now we hope impact. And as we, the faculty, staff, and alumni of the Glenn College, we marvel at this achievement. But simply, this was not an easy year to finish a degree. But you did it. So a tip of the hat to you. Well done. For the family and friends, this could not be done without you. No hard journey, as lonely as it can feel at times, is ever a journey alone. Thank you for the love, the care, the resources, the support that you have provided uh, to help today's graduates reach this important milestone. We celebrate you today as well. Faculty and staff of the Glenn College, you were instrumental parts of this journey for our graduates. Graduates we celebrate today benefited from your teaching, your guidance, your assistance, and your comfort and care. I'm awed by how well each of you have responded to this year of trying circumstances. COVID-19 has upended the way that we work, but not the way that you act and you conduct yourselves. When faculty or staff come to me um, to express their frustration about the circumstances of this last year, it is almost always about their anguish over caring for students and ensuring that they receive the highest quality experience inside or outside of the classroom. Perhaps there's more that we could have done to adapt and adjust to provide value for students, but it wasn't for a lack of constant and relentless effort on the part of faculty and staff throughout the college. I celebrate all of you making this milestone possible. This was a year of many challenges. I'm gonna highlight three. These are not the comprehensive three. There are plenty of challenges from this year, but these were perhaps the signature challenges of this past academic year. COVID-19, a global pandemic that has ravaged the nation and the globe. As of this morning, there were close to 33 million documented cases in the United States and almost 600,000 deaths. And we are watching across the world, particularly in India, as cases and deaths continue to rise. The development of a vaccine in less than a year was a moonshot, a remarkable achievement. 
and it created the potential, according to public health officials, to end the pandemic. But as rates of vaccination have slowed, we will more likely turn COVID-19 into a manageable endemic that'll be with us for the long haul, somewhat like the flu. Second, race and policing. On May 25th, 2020, and the days that followed, many of us, because of social media, witnessed the murder of George Floyd, a black man, by Derek Chauvin, a white Minneapolis police officer. That murder sparked a year of protests about race and policing that engulfed the country and engulfed Ohio and it engulfed Columbus. With people of all colors and black people in particular calling out for justice and equity of treatment. Most protests continue. Just yesterday down the street from us, students in the law school conducted a sit-in. The third is a threat to the cherished democracy that Yost just reminded us of. In January of 2021, after one of the most contested and conflictual elections of our collective lives, in which many citizens experienced challenges in accessing the ability to participate in the election, other citizens stormed and breached the Capitol because of a false belief that the election had been stolen. They attempted to disrupt Congress's certification of the electoral college votes. Several protesters and Capitol Police died on that day. And now national surveys suggest that a significant portion of the US population believes that the election of the president was illegitimate, eroding one of the foundations of American democracy, the integrity of the electoral system. So what do these three events share in common? Well, first, they're public. They concern all of us. Now, one may say, well, I'm not likely to get the virus or I'm now vaccinated and so I'm safe. Or the experience of many black Americans having the poli with policing, that doesn't concern me, perhaps because I'm not black. Or the election is over and we won't have another presidential election for three years. So I can turn away, I can retreat to some inner sanctum that many of us have created in the pandemic and I can engage the world through my phone. But all of these three events are collective. They impact all of us in different ways to be sure, but they take place in the public square where we are all witnesses and many of us are participants. And where over decades we have invested collective resources, our resources that have created the conditions for the occurrence of these events. We all bear a collective responsibility. The second distinguishing feature of these events is that they are complex. We live in a world where we're saturated with information, but most of it is banal, inflammatory, and inaccurate. But this is the type of information that all of us are now conditioned to consume. But the problems that these three circumstances reveal, COVID-19, race and policing, and election access integrity are that they are tremendously complex and never as straightforward as they appear or as they are presented to us. They are truly wicked problems. The third feature of these events is that they have divided rather than united. Times of great national crisis present opportunities to bring us together as a nation and as a community. Each of the three circumstances have similarly presented this opportunity, but for a variety of reasons, they've riven us. They've widened the gulf between the haves and the have nots, between those who benefit from systems of service delivery like healthcare and policing, and those who often suffer in those systems, and between those who feel they are owed and those who feel that something has been taken away. Fundamentally, they expose the erosion of faith and trust in public institutions and practices, healthcare, policing, elections. So what does this mean for you? What should you do 
graduates of the class of 2021 from the John Glenn College of Public Affairs. Well, you should start by celebrating. Enjoy this day, enjoy tomorrow. Bask in your personal and collective achievement. It's important to take pleasure in something that you work so hard to achieve. Next, you should recharge and repair. This has been a long year and it has taken a toll on many of us. We are not our best selves when we don't take time to care for ourselves. So create that space to rest and repair. But then, and most importantly, is what comes next. After you celebrate and after you heal, I ask three things of you. First, return to the arena. Do not retreat, but march forward into the public square. As embattled and conflictual as the world feels, and as comfortable as living our lives in constructed online environments feel, I ask you to re-enter the world of human interaction where things are blurry and they are complicated. This is why you came here. This is why you came to the university. This is why you came to the college because you wanted to be in that public square wrestling with challenging problems that vex us all. Second, use your powers for good. You came with the passion, and we've provided you with the tools to put that passion into action. You now have the skills and analysis, problem solving, leadership, and a host of other techniques. We'll use them, find things to fix. And third and finally, look to unite rather than define, divide. Seek common ground and common cause. Resist the centrifugal forces that pull us apart. That does not mean accepting a position you disagree with or embracing everyone. But I implore you to resist the temptation to give in to anger. Instead, find ways to listen, to understand, to have grace and forgiveness, and to acknowledge our own roles and responsibilities before you cast a stone. And should you want to cast a stone, I asked you to cast it in building a bridge rather than seeking to tear it down. The world needs good Samaritans and we ask you to be among them. It's a cliche to say that you all are why we are here. But the thing about cliches is they're rooted in genuine sentiment. You all are the reason we, the faculty and staff, are here physically and virtually. You make our lives pleasurable and enriching. We have the privilege of learning with you and being recharged by your enthusiasm and your commitment to growing and giving back. So thank you genuinely for the two, the four, or more years that you have given to us. Congratulations. Next, we're gonna to turn to a series of awards we give out annually to celebrate special achievements and devoted service. To start the acknowledgement of honorees, I'm gonna highlight that tomorrow at the university's commencement exercises, US House of Representative Joyce Beatty will receive an honorary doctorate in public service from the university. We're proud that the honorary doctorate in public service is conferred by the Glenn College. Representative Beatty has been a dedicated public servant and champion of the university, having formerly served as the university's director of outreach and engagement. We offer our hearty congratulations to Representative Beatty. And with that, we will now turn to the other awards. Hi, my name is Jessica Chevrolet and I'm president of the Public Affairs Student Association. It is my honor to announce the winners of two of John Glenn College's annual awards for excellence in the classroom. Both awards are decided by our graduate student body. Our first award is Outstanding Teaching Assistant Award that recognizes their exceptional performance and dedication to students over the past year. The recipient of this award has demonstrated her commitment to providing a safe and supportive learning space for all students. 
The winner of this year's award is PhD candidate Jill Davis. Our second honor, the Mary Kay Marvel Outstanding Graduate Teaching Award is awarded on the basis of excellence in instruction, a commitment to all students and contribution to the John Glenn College community. This instructor has demonstrated a dedication to fostering discussion and pushing students to think and reflect deeply by curating content and updating it in real time as the world changes around us. Her courses are enlightening and challenge students to consider the importance of our roles as public administrators. This year in particular has been challenging for us all and she has exhibited compassion and an inexhaustible willingness to assist and mentor students and student organizations. This year's Mary Kay Marvel winner is Katie Vinnabal. Congratulations to both winners. Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Craig, president of the John Glenn Civic Leadership Council, and today I have the pleasure of presenting a couple awards. The first award is the Outstanding Undergraduate Teaching Award, which is presented to a professor who goes above and beyond in their capacity as an educator. This particular individual has demonstrated a commitment to furthering the education of their students and has made a great contribution to the college. It is my pleasure to present the Outstanding Undergraduate Teaching Award to Dr. Russell Hassan. The second award is the Outstanding Undergraduate Teaching Assistant Award, which is presented to a teaching assistant that has shown great responsibility and willingness to help students achieve in class. And this year, it is my pleasure to present this award to Arbob Kazi. Let's get another round of applause for both our recipients and go Bucks. My name is Amanda Gerth and I have the pleasure of serving as the Director of Washington Studies at the Glenn College. I am located here in Washington, DC, where along with my colleagues, Katie Hogan and Sydney Rubin, we work to create opportunities for our Buckeyes here in the nation's capital. Today, I'm happy to recognize our program graduates and celebrate their outstanding accomplishments. We have two programs in DC, the Washington Academic Internship Program, which has served undergraduates for over two decades. WAPE students spend a semester living, learning, and interning in Washington, DC. It is a very competitive and rigorous program designed to cultivate their interest in public service, through experiential learning and professional development. In every semester, we ask a lot of our WAIP students, but this year in particular, as they navigated virtual experiences, they certainly rose to the challenge. Our second program, MPADC, is designed for our graduate students. They spend their first year in Columbus and move to DC their second year. Our graduate students intern nearly full-time take specialized coursework in federal policy and management, and finish their degree. They had impressive internships where they put their analytical skills to work. And just to highlight a few, we had students serving at the Partnership for Public Services Center for Presidential Transition, and in federal agencies, such as the Food and Drug Administration and U.S. Agency for International Development. I worked closely with these exceptional students, and although it wasn't quite the experience they had anticipated when they applied to the program, they handled this year with resilience, professionalism, and grace. I am so proud of all of the graduates of our DC programs. Congratulations and best wishes as you launch your career. Hello, my name is Stefan Lavertu. I am the doctoral director here at the Glenn College of Public Affairs. Uh, we have a PhD in public policy and management uh, that trains individuals to be researchers uh, and teachers in university settings, but also researchers and analysts in uh, government and nonprofit organizations like think tanks and foundations and other settings. And like our undergrad and master's programs, the philosophy is uh, that we're going to uh, gather tools from a variety of disciplines, a variety of fields uh, in an effort uh, to solve public problems. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about the five graduates for this year, um, just so you get a sense for what our students are up to, what our program is up to, and how uh, we're helping to make uh, this world a better place. Uh, so first, uh, Dr. K uh, Casey, uh, Stephanie Casey Pierce, excuse me, uh, studied uh, evictions 
and how evictions uh, can lead to incarceration uh, and how incarceration in turn uh, can lead uh, to evictions. And the idea is that understanding these dynamics, uh, how one affects the other, uh, can help us address uh, these very serious problems uh, that we have with evicting people from their homes and incarcerating uh, individuals. Uh, next, uh, Dr. Daniel Baker uh, studied police departments and particularly uh, uh, leadership and management in police departments and how that affects the views, the attitudes of police officers. Uh, in particular, uh, their attitudes and views with respect to community-based uh, policing. And so you can imagine that, yes, we can do things through coercion, through laws and, and top-down policies, uh, but leadership and management can also inspire changes uh, in behavior that can make police forces more effective at working with their communities, uh, which is something I think that uh, we all want uh, right now. Uh, next, uh, Dr. Lisa Gieri uh, used agent-based modeling and system dynamics modeling approaches to try to develop a theory of strategic planning in the context of crises. Uh, so again, very topical. Um, we all, I think, appreciate the value of uh, being able to uh, develop a course of action uh, in, on, under uncertain times uh, like we have right now. Next, uh, Dr. Aiden Irish studied rural communities uh, in Ohio and in Colorado uh, that were able to get together uh, and solve some of their local problems with respect to agricultural business and economic growth. Um, and you can imagine uh, that if uh, we identify what it is uh, that made those communities successful in working together and participating in governance, um, we might be able to foster this in other communities uh, and in the process strengthen our democracy. And last but not least, soon to be Dr. Andrew Van Leuven uh, studies economic development in the context of small towns uh, and cities. Uh, in particular, he wants to know how uh, investments in local businesses, for instance, uh, can spur or jumpstart uh, a revival in these communities. And those of us who've grown up in Ohio, particularly outside of Columbus, uh, can appreciate the value of knowing uh, what works uh, for turn, turning around our communities, which um, have sometimes been uh, in decline, unfortunately. So just these five students, uh, as you can tell, are addressing five very different, but very important and actually interrelated uh, problems. And they're gonna go on to be faculty members and researchers and other organizations uh, and educating our kids and our policymakers uh, so that we can make our uh, communities uh, safer and better. Hello everyone and happy pre-commencement. I would like to echo Dean Brown and others in congratulating all the graduates and wishing you the best in your future endeavors. Our students never cease to impress me and that is perhaps more true than ever this year. It is my pleasure to present the Mary E. Cashmar Outstanding Service Award. This award was established by Jody and Scott Gary, MPA 1987, in honor of Scott's grandmother, Mary Cashmar, who passed away on December 12, 1986. This award is offered annually in remembrance of her truly gracious nature. We thank the Gary family for their commitment to the Glenn College and our students. This unique service award recognizes a graduating master's or PhD student enrolled in a, a Glenn College program who has been nominated by their peers as demonstrating selfless giving to others without expectation of compensation or acknowledgement. This is truly a student to student award. With the COVID-19 pandemic and the resulting changes to life at Ohio State over the last year and a half, the selection of this award, wa award was a bit different from in years past. A significant portion of this graduating class spent close to 70% of their Glenn College career in a virtual format, and thus student-to-student -student interaction looked a bit different from a typical year. However, the situation did force us all to adapt, and I am pleased to say that many Glenn students still found ways to build community and help out each other in non-traditional ways, including this year's recipient. This year's re recipient was a member and leader within the inaugural MPADC cohort, but made a point of working to engage with her peers both in Columbus and DC. As the MPADC representative for PASA, she displayed a commitment to creating an inclusive environment for first-year students as they started their graduate experience virtually. 
Examples of this include creating a group me for members of both cohorts, sending out in numerous internship opportunities, and always making herself available to talk with any incoming student. Additionally, she created a video for the MPA DC professional development course and conducted countless informational interviews about her pathways experience. Finally, she signed, she signed up the Glenn College's grad, grad school group Friendship 7 for the weekly OUAB trivia contest. Through this, she helped to bridge cohorts by inviting everyone to play trivia and build commitment and build commitment between all students throughout this virtual year. Virtual year. Please join me in congratulating this year's recipient of the Mary E. Ketchmar Outstanding Service Award, Christina Bush. Congratulations, Christina. Hello again. I also have the honor of presenting the 2021 Exemplary Community Service Award. This award is given annually to a graduating Glen College undergraduate or graduate student who has demonstrated outstanding service to the community. Now, it's fair to say that community service has looked a bit different during the last year, but as they have done in so many other ways, our students have adapted. We had many deserving nominations for this award as Glen College students found creative ways to pay it forward, help others, and serve their communities. This year's recipient completed over 400 hours of volunteer work through organizations including Buckeye Thon, the Women's Fund of Central Ohio, Crisis Text Line, the Ohio Expo Center and State Fair, the National 4-H Council, and the Franklin County Board of Elections. Specific examples of her service include working to convert OSU's annual dance marathon philanthropy to a virtual event, collab collaborating with Nationwide Children's Hospital and the Ohio State University Legal Department in developing a new champion family program, working with the Women's Fund of Central Ohio to create and vet more than 70 microgrant applications for COVID-9 relief programs for women and girls, and volunteering as a crisis counselor to answer texts from people facing individuals, facing abuse, depression, stress, suicidal thoughts, and more. For these reasons and so many more, we are delighted to present the 2021 Exemplary Community Service Award to Noor Al Shafi. Congratulations, Noor. Hello, and uh, it's my pleasure to um, introduce this year's Robert Backoff Research Award. So this, as it suggests, is, is given to a current PhD student from the college. My name is Neil Hooker, and along with Long Tran and Sam Malloy, uh, we were the committee this year for the 2021 Backoff Research Award. And we were uh, presented with six fantastic pieces of research. Uh, student involved that um, we then had to compare and contrast across a range of techniques and topics. Um, this diversity and depth of papers and submissions bodes really well for our program. I think it's been some time uh, since the college has had such a, a broad and deep set of PhD uh, research papers to consider. And I think, again, that that suggests that our current cohort of PhD students will go on to do great things. Uh, and it raises the bar for our future PhD students. And so that's, that's great for the program. Um, and really as a, as a subtext here, the only way this is possible is because there's a lot of mentoring of these uh, PhD students by uh, their advisors and committees. Uh, and we'd like to recognize that inherently as part of this, this process. So the committee then had a tough job to compare and contrast six diverse pieces of research. Uh, and um, it took a lot of time and, and uh, debate, but um, we eventually made a, um, a decision as is our charge. But we wanted to, um, to give a special extra call out to Rebecca Smith uh, and her co-authors for this fantastic piece of research in JPART. Um, we felt uh, the, um, the quality of the data collection, the evaluation, um, the topic obviously being very germane, uh, was a great piece of research and, and this ticked so many of the boxes for the criteria um, and um, 
and we, we congratulate Rebecca for, a, for an outstanding piece of research. However, uh, we did want to come with a, um, a single winner. Uh, and um, as difficult as it was, as I said, to, um, to struggle through or to compare these six pieces of research, um, we felt that there was, there was one that really commanded our attention. And we'd like to recognize Lickman and her co-authors for this fantastic piece of research. Some of the aspects that we considered particularly important were that uh, this, this really was a mixed methods approach. It's a, a piece of research that has already gained the attention of practitioners in, in the uh, food policy field. And, um, and it's led to future research opportunities for, for Alana and the team. And that then I think suggests a great path of professional development uh, that we um, were eager to follow and, and watch as Alana grows through that experience and we congratulate her for winning the 2021 uh, Back Off Research Award. Hi everyone, I'm Jim Landers. I'm the chairperson of the Graduate Capstone Project Awards Committee for 2021. And I'm pleased to announce the winners of the awards for outstanding graduate capstone projects. I'd like to thank my colleagues on the committee, Dr. Kate Hallahan and Dr. Ned Hill for their assistance with the awards selection. The graduate capstone project is a requirement for master's level students to graduate from the MPA, in-career MA, and online MPAL degree programs. The capstone project enables students to bridge theory and practice and put the knowledge and skills they've learned in the classroom to action on real world public policy and management problems. There are two types of capstone projects that students can pursue, the traditional research paper and the client-based research project. The traditional research paper requires students to develop a topic and research questions relating to a public policy or management problem of interest to them, and then to conduct the empirical research to examine and analyze the problem and its, and its implications for policy or management. The client-based research project requires students to conduct research on a specific policy or management problem for an external client, like for instance, a government program or a nonprofit organization. To recognize the efforts of master's students who have conducted outstanding work on capstone projects, the Glenn College annually gives an award for the outstanding traditional research paper and a separate award for the outstanding client-based research project. This year, the committee considered capstone projects that were completed during the summer 2020, autumn 2020, and spring 2021 semesters. Now for the winning projects. The winner of the award for the outstanding traditional research paper is Mary Sagatilova for her study of how plant species respond to different types of government and private land management systems. Congratulations, Mary, and kudos for your outstanding work on this project. The winner of the award for the outstanding client-based project is Benjamin Johnson for his project to develop a new organizational and management structure for the University Communications Office here at Ohio State. Congratulations, Benjamin, and kudos to you as well for your outstanding work on this project. And finally, congratulations to all of our 2020, 2021 graduates. Thank you. Each year here in the Policy School, we recognize one outstanding undergraduate public policy paper. Faculty from across the college nominate their most exceptional papers, inclusive of undergraduate capstones, term papers, policy briefs, and white papers. This year, our committee received a robust volume of submissions, and the competition was high. I'm pleased to announce that the winner of this year's Outstanding Undergraduate Paper Award 
is a paper entitled Sexual Harassment and Sexual Assault on College Campuses, Can Title IX Handle It? Written by Olivia Sweeney and nominated by Professor Shana Jagers. This paper provides an impassioned set of arguments responsive to gaps and holes in the current implementation of Title IX on college and university campuses. And it argues that our current set of policies requiring merely reporting of adverse actions creates an environment that diminishes the efficacy and the intent of Title IX. Rather, she argues for a more interventionist approach that calls upon bystanders to intervene to create a culture of guardianship. The committee in particular noted the timeliness of the topic and the thoroughness of the policy recommendations. Please join me in congratulating Olivia Sweeney on this award. Our final award is the Outstanding Public Service Award winner. Each year, the college recognizes an individual for outstanding career contributions or a single outstanding contribution to public service. The award was first given in 1987. Recent recipients include Tim Keene, former director of the Ohio Office of Budget and Management, our own dear Annie Glenn, uh, former Director of Public Safety John Bourne, uh, Ohio Senator Charletta Tavares, and most recently last year, the Director of Health Amy Acton. This year's award winner is Chief Justice of the Ohio Supreme Court, Maureen O'Connor. Justice O'Connor has had an illustrious and distinguished career. A graduate of Seton Hall University and Cleveland State University's Marshall College of Law, she has served as an appointed magistrate in Summit County Probate Court, elected judge of the Summit County Court of Common Pleas, elected Summit County Prosecutor, Lieutenant Governor under Bob Taft, and then elected as a member of the Ohio Supreme Court immediately following her term as Lieutenant Governor. She became Chief Justice over a decade ago, becoming the first woman in the state of Ohio to serve in that role, and only the sixth woman to ever serve on the Ohio Supreme Court. Chief Justice O'Connor has made many career contributions at the intersection of law and public policy, particularly in her role as Chief Justice. As many of you know, the Glenn College and the Ohio State Moritz College of Law have a long-standing partnership in the offering a dual JD and MPA degree. The impetus for creating such a partnership was to in address problems that citizens and communities face that often involve law, public policy, administration, and the delivery of public services. Our dual degree graduates are able to see the connections and work across fields and disciplines to craft and implement creative and impactful solutions. Justice O'Connor's actions as Supreme Court Justice embody this interconnected and collaborative approach, most notably her efforts to bring together multiple actors across the state to combat the opioid epidemic in Ohio. She has also been a leader in fighting racial injustice in the judicial and legal system, an issue that is front and center nationally and within the hearts of minds of so many in the Glenn College community. She embodies public service and leadership. Please join me in congratulating this year's Outstanding Public Service Award winner, Chief Justice Maureen O'Connor. Thank you, Dean Brown, for your kind introduction. Hello, everyone. It is my great honor to receive this award from a college named for one of the greatest heroes of Ohio and America. The name John Glenn and the term public service were inseparable during his amazing life. Now his name and public service are forever linked at a school whose impressive programs and faculty set a standard for our nation. I am impressed by the Glenn College's approach to carrying out civic improvement. Your programs are varied yet interconnected. Foundational studies like public administration, budgeting, finance, and regulatory matters are connected with education policy, housing, health policy, science, the environment, criminal justice, and many other disciplines. 
These programs are tied together because in our society, they affect one another. By further connecting these subjects with performance studies and social metrics, you have created a powerful force for good. Your late mentor, who orbited the Earth and returned to make it a better place, understood the challenge of this world. Our problems cannot be met without endeavor, research, and education. He understood one other necessary ingredient, collective action. You could call it social teamwork. When I think of created problem solving, I see teams of experts from diverse fields sharing their knowledge and creating solutions that exceed the sum of each individual's contributions. That kind of goal explains the mission of this college, and it's the kind of work I try to foster in the Ohio judiciary. It is also why I am so honored to receive your award. The social forces we face in one arena, such as mine, the administration of justice, carry over in so many places where people need help and where social progress can be achieved. This is what makes our quest to improve the world difficult and thrilling at the same time. The inequities in our society that this college and its people address every day are wide and troublesome. It is why the curriculum of our working lives must be broad. Nearly five years ago, our state and nation was reaching an apex in opioid addiction. I concluded that the problem could not be adequately addressed by any one state in our region, nor could it be addressed by any single branch of government or agency. So I brought eight states together in Cincinnati to start the hard work of tackling the opioid epidemic collectively. We had no roadmap. For three solid days, scores of representatives from our neighboring states worked collectively, drawing an interagency, interstate, interdisciplinary roadmap. By the way, during those three days, while we were working, a dozen fellow Ohioans died of opioid poisoning on the streets of our host city. The real world was very close by. The organization we created is called the Regional Judicial Opioid Initiative, ARJOY for short. We opened our doors to experts outside the world of government. We are comprised of academics in medicine, health, sciences, and social research. We include substance abuse specialists, judges, court staff, and law enforcement. We achieve changes in state and local laws, first by making a persuasive case to legislators. Our approach is working and it has been copied in other regions and nationally. We produced a holistic approach to a problem. Each person dives more deeply into their expertise while working in new areas beyond their normal skill set. We have built a continuum of knowledge for all of our members that changes and grows. Two decades ago, those being adjudicated for drug offenses went before a local court with a law and order mindset. Over time, we introduced drug courts, of which we now have nearly 150 in Ohio. Today, we have empowered judges with knowledge and solutions. They can extend options for court participants that are wider and more progressive and based on science and research. Our judges have been exposed to exotic fields such as brain chemistry and the effects of drugs on behavior. They possess this higher understanding because the Judicial College of Ohio, which is part of the Supreme Court, has placed science next to law in its classrooms. In these same courts in our 88 counties, we, like you at the Glenn College, try to connect the roots of inequities in order to fully understand an individual's problems. We work to set them up for resolution. When their problems are solved, society benefits as well. No longer forced to deal with the crime presented before them, our courts have a broader social outlook. They deal with the connected worlds of housing, jobs, racial and gender discrimination, food and family dynamics. My own journey as Chief Justice these past 10 years have given me an appreciation for academic expertise and the kind of work and research you perform at the Glenn College. We have learned to create partnerships in social problem solving. By doing so, we will continue our quest of breaking down social problems by lifting up our common understanding. As John Glenn said, we should inspire each other to work towards the good of mankind. To students today, I say please remember this. So often when we decide to pursue a problem, we have no road map. Your first task often is to create a map. Make sure it's inclusive. 
When you set out your goals, be sure to look at the problem from angles that others can view, but which you cannot see. Your next step often will be to seek expert advice. That expert might be a PhD, or the expert might be homeless or a victim of discrimination. Always remember that while you may begin without a map, you do have a compass. The elements of your social policy compass include honesty, integrity, and commitment. I'm grateful for this award and for all that the students and the faculty at the Glenn College are working to achieve. To me, public service is the most noble of missions. John Glenn said, quote, there is no greater calling. I could not agree more. Thank you once again. Be proud of your achievements. Have a wonderful commencement weekend. And to all, I wish you Godspeed. Good afternoon, graduates, family, and friends. My name is Lisa Frerichs, and I'm the Glenn College Alumni Director. On behalf of the college's faculty, staff, and alumni, it is my sincere pleasure to be the first to welcome you to the John Glenn College of Public Affairs alumni community. As graduates, you are now joining a prestigious group of over 4,000 alumni living all over the world who, like you, have a heart for public service and positively impacting the world we live in today. Please know that your involvement with the Glenn College doesn't need to stop after graduation. And in fact, we're counting on seeing you again soon. Whatever your interests or availability, there are many ways to remain an active member of the Glenn College community. By first and foremost, letting us know where you land after graduation and keeping your contact information up to date so that we can keep in touch with each other. Sharing your expertise with students as a mentor or volunteering to be a guest speaker at a career talk helping promote and recruit prospective students to one of the many Glenn College academic programs, and getting involved with the Glenn College Alumni Society by attending one of its many fun events or building your leadership skills by serving on a committee or the Alumni Society Board. In return, I want you to know the Glenn College remains committed to your lifelong professional development. As alumni, you will continue to have access to career counseling, and we encourage you to take advantage of professional development events like the Glenn College Leadership Forum, policy talks like Dialogue, or Dean Brown's podcast, Policy Brief, as well as meaningful training and networking opportunities. Please don't be a stranger. Let me close by saying that we are so proud of you. This past year has been anything but easy, but you showed us all how resilient you are. Public servants are called to moments like this and you passed with flying colors. Congratulations on all that you've achieved, and I wish you nothing but the best as you pursue your personal and professional dreams. Take good care.
Graduates, once again, congratulations with this achievement. Enjoy today, enjoy tomorrow with your family, your friends, and then Monday is going back at work. Now, remember two things. There are two things that uh, all human beings have in common. Biologically, we're homo sapiens. Sociologically, we're all human beings. Let's keep an eye out for what it means to be a human being, to be inclusive. And of course, people can think in terms of in-groups and out-groups, that's okay, as long as we do not actively discriminate on that basis. And that sometimes happens a little too much. I like to think that with the degree that you have um, um, received today, that you actually have quite a few tools at your uh, disposal to be the citizen that we have all seen in the classroom. So many congratulations, enjoy the day. It's lovely sunny weather and uh, feel free to come by anytime. Our doors are always open. Thank you.